Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. This is my own car. I hammered this car software very hard in a previous video. I mean, how the hell did they come up with this car? I did a 20 minute rant on how could Volkswagen produce such a brilliantly car hardware wise and ended up with software that was as hopeless as it is. That video made its way onto DW. And I have more than one friends who works in Wolfsburg and Munich telling me they've seen the video. That video was shot me sitting inside the studio using this telescope branded microphone, you remember? Since then, I've done more than 40,000 kilometers in this car. And you might think, like anything in life, you're stuck with something long enough or someone long enough, you eventually get used to its limitations and focus on the good stuff, right? I couldn't. The wireless CarPlay just keeps I could go on for another half an hour rant on the software, but you can see that despite the software limitations, I still like my ID3 very much. So when I heard there's a China spec ID3 Pro with improved software in the studio behind us, I still show up. We are here to offer constructive criticism, but uh, I just wonder what could be constructive about Volkswagen software. So this is the new ID3. I need to make one thing clear. This is not the European facelift. This is just very few slight updates from the exterior anyway. This cow cover, for example, is still in black and not in body color like the European facelifted ID3. But Shanghai Volkswagen is not charging us European ID3 money, so I'm not going to complain. We suspect this new ID3 will be priced around 15,000 euros in China. I know the ID3 sells about nearly 40,000 euros in Europe. My European viewers don't just explode. It's been like this for a while. I bought my ID3 Pro with the IQ Lite for about 20,000 euros back in 2022. So yeah, the price has been consistent for China, but I understand this price would be quite inflammatory for some European viewers. The only obvious change from the front is now this Volkswagen logo lights up. It doesn't on my old car. Now this doesn't bother me, but I know a lot of people is not happy about this logo doesn't light up on the ID3, while well, it does on the ID4. And so yeah, from the front, if this logo lights up, then you know it's the new ID3. The major update, would you believe it, is the software. To be honest, this is the last area where I expect Volkswagen to improve. We showed you the Volkswagen Tiguan L Pro a while ago, and that car already has a very different looking infotainment software. So my expectation is for this ID3 Pro to get that software. But surprise, surprise, this is another step. Now this is the home screen. Let's just stop right here because just this home screen alone represents a monumental step forward. This was the home screen in my old ID3. Now look at this. Now the map is the underlying layer of this home screen. If I drag this map around, wow, now this is very responsive. This doesn't happen on my old ID3. Okay, I digress. If I drag this map around, you can see in these small gaps behind these elements, it really is moving around. So the map now is the true underlying layer of the home screen. And you have widget modules on the left. I mean, really? Widget? On a Volkswagen? Am I dreaming? If, I, if you haven't gone through 40,000 kilometers of software torturing like I did, you wouldn't understand how much of a shock this is. You have music, your phone connection, and a weather app. Wow. I mean, this is, dare I say, this looks quite modern. They have also vastly improved the voice command system. Now this is quite difficult to demonstrate in an English video, but let me put it this way. In my old ID3, I much prefer Siri to Volkswagen's own voice command. And let's be honest, Siri is quite rubbish in any language. Now on this, they've switched the natural language recognition engine behind the voice command to iFlyTech or Kodashunfei in Chinese. That is the model behind every modern Chinese EVs. So now this voice command can finally understand me consistently. 你好大众。
Now this in itself is a huge improvement because sometimes your phone could glitch. Wireless CarPlay is not always reliable and it's not always the system's fault. Sometimes your phone could glitch as well. You must have experienced like you think the navigation is still working. When you find out it's already stopped working, you've already passed the junction and now you scramble to reset navigation and because your phone has jammed, you need to restart your phone. It's a mess, right? You might wonder in that kind of scenario, why wouldn't I switch to the built-in navigation? And that's the problem because the built-in voice command could never ever understand me. Now, this can. To be honest, the navigation system, even in my old car, is quite good once you set the navigation because the underlying data of this navigation system is Kaudetitu. That is the most popular navigation map among the Chinese public. So now with this improved voice command, I can really see myself just using the built-in navigation all the time because this navigation also works with the IQ Lite if you go for the Pro model. And that is high praise for any car. I'm also hearing they might update the language engine behind this voice command in the future to large language model, LLM. The same architecture like ChatGPT. Of course, the model behind it is going to be much smaller, but still, AI in a Volkswagen? Really? And that's not the only AI feature in this car. Now you can replicate your own image and your own voice. Now this is clearly not me because this is a female, but I've done the calibration process previously. Um, you just need to take a picture of yourself and we'll emulate what they think is closest to me. Now this is, I don't think this look anything like me, but at least it's got glasses. Let's set this. So now the voice command on the top left corner is what Volkswagen think is me. Also, you can replicate your own voice. You need to read like 10 sentences. And now this is my voice. And let's try it. 你好大众。请说. Oh, this really is me. Um, 导航到人民广场。这有好多,谁哪个,尽管告诉我。Wow, this really sounds vaguely like me. This, this is much better than the emoji replication. Well, that's quite interesting. It's also quite creepy. Why would anyone want to replicate their own voice? But I can see some parents might want to replicate their kid's voice and you might want to replicate your partner's voice. So when they are not physically with you in the car, they can still be with you virtually. The rest of the hardware is still the same ID3 that I like. Class leading chassis dynamics, crazy maneuverability, and a lot of space. And I need to say one thing as an owner, the battery of this car holds up really well. I did a trip from Shanghai to Ningbo when I first took delivery of the car. It was the first long distance trip I did on the car, so I remember it very clearly. It got to the destination with about 40 kilometers of range left on the dash. I recently did that trip again, the same route in even hotter conditions, and my car got to the destination with 38 kilometers range left on the dash. So that's 40,000 kilometers after two years, at least 160 to 180 cycles into it, and barely any battery degradation. Volkswagen is claiming 97% capacity retention, after 500 cycles at room temperature. I don't doubt that claim. They have 338 in-house battery standards. That's 200 more than the national mandatory standards. And this car ID3 has been independently verified to have the best quality ratings of any compact EVs in China. But I'm not really surprised by this because that's just Volkswagen being Volkswagen. Now this car also has the so-called remote parking assist I'm now outside of the car, nobody is driving it. If I press this, it should start parking itself into this space. Now, I think this function is more for the bigger ID4 than it is for this smaller ID3. Because my suggestion is if you can't park a car as small and maneuverable as this, you might as well give up driving altogether. I strongly suggest that. This is one of the easiest cars to park on the market today. 
To people who understand Volkswagen like me, there's no real competition for this car in this class. I used the word class-leading chassis dynamics before. Now, class-leading might make you feel other cars in this class are just a tiny bit worse than this car in terms of handling. Actually, they're not. They are several postcodes behind. My initial rant video on this car well, has a title like Brilliant Hardware Almost Ruined by Dismal Software. Now, the hardware still is very good. Now, dare I say, this is a modern Volkswagen, both in terms of hardware and now in software. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.